Mayor James Cowie became mayor of the city of Lake Forest on May 4th, 2009. Prior to taking office, he was the fourth ward alderman for six years from May of 20, 2000 to May of 2006. And during this time, he served as the chairman of public works committee and as a member of the finance committee. As alderman, he also served on a number of ad hoc committees, including the water plant committee, route 60 planning and acquisitions, municipal services, sewer improvement, and street light committees. He continued his commitment to public service when his term as alderman ended by serving as chairman of the Ad Hoc Environmental Policy Advisory Committee. He's president of Land and Lakes, an Illinois-based real estate construction and environmental services firm, and with his wife, Lisa, have three children. They, are also, they have been active members of the Lake Forest community for over 14 years. Mayor Jim Cowie. Thank you, Joanna, and I want to thank the Chamber for having us this afternoon, and certainly want to thank Deer Path, too, for hosting us and for their great food. Uh, it certainly uh, helps to get people here when you have good food. But uh, I want to talk about, uh, obviously, the things that are happening in Lake Forest, and my focus is going to be kind of more on the, on the downtown and some of the bigger issues that we're, we're working on right now. Uh, first, we, we held a strategic planning. A session here last May, the last one was probably about seven years ago, and we had a group of uh, all, obviously the city council, city staff, and then a number of the major contributors and uh, organizations within the city. And we hope to have another meeting here, trying to get through the summer and get everyone back together again, and then we'll come out with our published plan, what we think is uh, our new strategic uh, initiatives going forward, probably early this fall. So that's uh, another major initiative. The next one is certainly Northwestern Lake Forest Hospital. As you're all aware, I know there's some individuals here from the hospital this afternoon. I know the president couldn't be here, but um, certainly that's a big, big expansion that's going to happen in Lake Forest. Uh, this is just the beginning stages. It's been through the plan commission. It's been through first reading of the city council, and I know they'll be coming back soon for uh, a second reading. And I know that's a long process. I think a lot of the public doesn't quite understand that they have to get through not only the Lake Forest process, which certainly we're working with them, and I think that'll go well. Then they have to go to the state and get their need certificate, and then obviously come back and go through all the building and construction. So this is going to be probably, my understanding, probably a four or five year process yet. But it's going to be a huge expansion. I know the Lake Forest. Um, Northwestern is going to spend probably 300 to 400 million dollars on that property and it's going to be a first class facility so we're very excited about Northwestern's commitment to the community and that's going to be a great plus for us. Another initiative that um, we've been working on for the last three years is uh, our Amtrak stop on the west side train station. Uh, this is something we've been working on for about three years now and the good news is we have all our funds for a pedestrian underpass. That was one of the key pieces that we need in order to get Amtrak to stop. The, that's the good news. Uh, the, the hard part is to get all the railroads together and to get them to agree on changing schedules. And we've had a number of very good consultants working on this, but to get uh, four or five major railroads together and just change a minute or two on a schedule has is, is been quite a quite a process. We're down to our last sign-off right now. We're hoping to get that soon, and if we can do that, we'll have Amtrak actually stop. This will be the only stop in Lake County, um, and our, our hope there is certainly that that'll open up a lot of um, opportunities for folks both living in Wisconsin and Chicago to come up here and to work on e either downtown Lake Forest or certainly on all the Route 60 uh, corporations. So. Uh, and the other good news is, too, is you can get up to um, the airport in Wisconsin and Milwaukee probably within 45 minutes and hop on a, a plane from up there as well. So we're very excited about that, and we're hoping to, to continue to, to get that, that moving. The underpass is probably about a year plus away yet, but uh, it's moving forward. I also want to uh, announce that we certainly have had a good year. A lot of people think that, you know, the economy uh, certainly is struggling, but that downtown Lake Forest has been struggling. But the numbers certainly don't say that, and I want to read off. We have uh, 16 new businesses in the last 18 months, and I want to read a list of them here that, uh, that we're aware of. We have Pasquazis on the Square that opened up this year, CB Blue Jeans, uh, Douglas Vacuum, the new market house on the Square that was uh, a new ownership, 
Donati's Pizza Expansion, Caribou Coffee, Lake Geneva Pie Company, Grand Cru Wine Store, Joseph A. Bank, The Daily Method, UB Nail Station, the Ad Properties have moved in, uh, Megan Winters Interior Design, Sarah Campbell, New Women's Store in Market Square, and Authentico, the Mexican restaurant that's going to be opening up here in August. Uh, I walked by there last night and I know they're working on the, on the building right now. So there is activity and we're happy to, to announce that and I certainly want to thank Susan Kelsey. Uh, she's worked very hard to try to get new, new folks in town and I know there's also a lot more that we can't talk about yet that uh, I, I've been privy to but we're, we're working on to get into Lake Forest. And so it is, it is uh, vibrant and we're, we're moving ahead. Uh, some of the other initiatives that we're working on is certainly the East Lake Forest train station that should be 100% occupied by the end of the year with two more new businesses. And then of course uh, many of you are aware and thankfully attend the farmers market on Saturdays. We've gone through three Saturdays. We've got 15 more to go. So that's been a nice success for the downtown and to get people in here on the weekends as well. And I also want to thank uh, some of the initiatives. We've been working with Lake Forest College for quite a while. We have some of their interns here. I know we have two of them here today that are attending the luncheon that uh, are helping us both uh, on uh, promoting our businesses in the downtown Lake Forest and other initiatives. But they have a number of them here. They have is Lake Forest College Garden participates in the farmer market. We have official representative attends the city council meetings. We have a new welcome back beach party. Sounds like a lot of fun, August 28th. So is that only for Lake College residents? <laughs> Oh well, okay. <clears throat> uh, back to school days of a retail promotion on July 28th. Uh, we have a new Live Work Play app uh, promotion, uh, promotion by the Lake Forest College chapter of the American Marketing Association. And we have five interns working this summer at City Hall on various projects such as identifying customer zip codes, assisting with new business incubator, creating a Sylvia Shaw Judson walking tour, and taping the Inside Lake Forest videos. So we're happy to, to have you guys aboard. Thank you. And also, as Christine talked about Lake Bluff, I want to talk about our, a little bit about our you know, financial outlook. Uh, obviously, Lake Forest, as you know, is a pretty conservative community as far as financially. Uh, we have been AAA rated and bonded basically uh, forever. We will continue to do that. I know I, I was sat down when I first became mayor by the, uh, the, the living past mayors, and there were 11 at that time. And uh, the first thing they grilled me on is make sure you keep your AAA bond rating. So that is in, instilled in every mayor that walks into this town, and I'm sure that they will, we will continue to do that. But our, our budget looks good. Uh, we actually are running a surplus. We did a, a reorganization with our city employees over the last two years. We had approximately, I think it was about 25, Bob, at this point now that have... Um, opted to uh, retire early. Certainly that has helped us save a lot in our pensions. We're probably going to save in the area of around 600 plus thousand a year on the, on the pension liability alone going forward. So that's a nice, a nice savings and surplus for the community. Um, you know, I, I would only say again with what Christine has talked about earlier with pensions that, you know, it's, it, it is a problem. I think the communities, uh, in a lot of ways, that have, that have worked hard at budgeting and all that will be able to, to weather this. Uh, you know, my concern is, is something that Bob Colley and I sit down with a lot on, is that, uh, you know, how do we factor in what's going to happen with the state of Illinois? I think that's one of the bigger issues, certainly in my mind, that I, I don't know how they're going to deal with it. Are they going to come back and try to, you know, steal more money from the coffers of the uh, municipalities? and how is this going to play out over time. So it's something that we're certainly aware of and, and every time Bob and I sit down and talk about the financial outlook going forward, I always say, well, let's put a little more money aside because, you know, we don't know what's going to happen at the state level. But uh, the City of Lake Forest is doing well, I knock on wood, but um, um, I'm happy to entertain any questions from the public as well. No, that was easy. <laughs> Either put you all to sleep or you're, yes? Are you directly impacted by the state uh, budget problems? Somewhere? Well, I mean, yes, yes and no. I mean, obviously we have to take care of our own pensions and our own liabilities. My point is that 
Uh, you know, the state has, and you can read the paper every day, it's, it's somewhere in the, in the area of, I think, 90 billion or so that they are underfunded or not funded. And how, is, how are they going to fund that? They're going to, they're, you know, what they're going to do down there to, to fill that hole is anybody's guess. But the rumblings have been, and it happened all through last year and again through this spring, are, you know, what, what new laws will they come up with to try to claw back some of the monies that go to municipalities in order to fund that? And that's our concern. I mean, it's just stuff that we, legislation that, you know, we, we may be somewhat aware of, but we probably have no control over. And that's the issue that I think we need to be really aware of and concerned about. Yes. Can I water my lawn? My lawn. <laughs> well, you can if it's an odd even day and it's between uh, ten and eight. Um, you know, that's a good question on the on the on the whole watering plan. Uh, our plant in Lake Forest, we own and operate as a smaller plant. Uh, I was talking to Bob here just the last couple of days, and I know our our head of our public works has been very concerned about you know our our capacity limits. Uh, we typically pump about three million gallons a day on a normal day. We've been pumping 12 to 14 million gallons and typically this is this is folks that have automatic sprinkler systems and a lot of that goes to people go out of town especially last week. Um, there are a lot of people out of town because of the holiday in the middle of the week. They took the week off and you drive around town and you see a lot of these systems on because you know they're not home to to operate them or regulate them. But <coughs> It is, it is a problem that, you know, our main concern is not that, you know, we certainly don't mind selling that water because it's a, it's a benefit to the, to the coffers of the city, but we worry about if we can't get enough capacity back during the, the middle of the day to fill up the water tower, and then the water tower is where your pressure comes from, and then we worry about pipe breakage and stuff like that. So, yes, you can. We're back to the ban. The full ban is off, but we're back to odd even days, and I believe it's uh, 10 to 8, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. You cannot, you cannot water. But again, certainly the best time to water in this heat is at night anyway. So, turn them on at night, and uh, we're we're hoping that we get some rain soon. Any other questions? No. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Have a wonderful day, and we hope that we'll see you at another Chamber event soon.